One of the most important skills I gained from my bachelor's degree was learning how to teach myself. Through it, I gained self-reliance and specialization beyond what my program could offer. Learning independently is a very difficult skill to master, even more so without proper guidance. It is made even harder by a lack of confidence in one's own ability and a passive view of education, which are often deeply ingrained in students' minds. My teaching philosophy is centered around providing the resources that students require to build up their confidence, master key skills and grow in independence. A significant part of my efforts go into maintaining a positive and stimulating learning environment, which has a significant impact on students' motivations to learn. My goal is to empower students by giving them some agency over their learning. For example, I offer a variety of recorded, written and practical material so that students are, are able to go over it at their own pace, either independently or with guided instruction from me during a live session. I provide extra challenges and necessary scaffolding to account for variations in students' prior knowledge. As much as possible, I try to allow students to choose the topic of their own assessments. I develop my lessons around coding and analysis of real data to provide students with authentic tasks and a chance to practice a wide range of skills. I build in time for peer instruction to encourage students to interact and learn from each other. This is doubly important for online learning where engagement and social isolation of students are often very problematic. A sense of agency, learning skills that are demonstrably useful and learning alongside their peers are some of the biggest motivators for adult learners. I'm also a proponent of open access and collective development of learning resources. Too often we find ourselves developing the same set of slides, practicals and notes. When open access resources do exist, they tend to be highly specific to particular modules, lessening their potential for reuse. And there's often also no easy way for others to submit improvements to the material. In this, higher education has much to learn from open source software communities. In open source, we work collaboratively to develop software that fulfills the needs of the community. We encourage others to contribute changes and join our development teams instead of reinventing the wheel by themselves. We develop tools like version control systems that enable collaboration on our projects. So ultimately, I plan to update and rework my teaching materials to make them more suitable for collaborative development. I hope to implement several of the research-based techniques outlined in a paper by Deveni et al. from 2018. Uh, this will be a significant effort, but I strongly believe that it is well worth doing. We all benefit from improving the commons.